Hey guys, welcome back to Post Series. Today, I want to go over a process with you that you should always do. Well, most of the time, you should definitely do this before you even start comping your shot, and that's degraining your footage or removing the grain from your footage. Most often, you will use the reduced noise. plug in. So I'll just set this up real quick and we'll go through some of the steps that are involved when using um, the reduced noise. So first and foremost, we want to open up the options for the reduced noise. So we want to load in our footage into the reduced noise. Now once we have that loaded in, we will want to follow a few kind of rules when we're trying to select an area um, to apply the reduced noise. Now first, there is an auto profile button here, and most of the time this auto profile will actually work. So let's just first try it with the auto profile. So we have the auto profile, we can apply it, and then we'll take a look at what that did for our footage. And let's zoom into a grainy area, and now we see that we still have a little grain in this footage. Um, so let's go over some of those rules that I was talking about. And I'll just apply another reduced noise and then um, we'll, we'll do some things different in this one. So let's open that one up. And the rules that I was um, suggesting be followed when you are going to denoise or degrain your plate is you want to make sure you have a large area. So you want the sample area to be large. You don't want to select pic, um, pixels that are too bright like these because they don't have that much grain in them. You don't want to select pixels that are too saturated. And this is especially when you're working with blue and green screens. And you want to try to pick something more in the mid-tone range. So these pixels here that um, the auto pro profile selected. Now, the reason that the auto profile selected these pixels it's because it's going to try to search for a uniform area. So not only do you want to se select a large area, you also want it to be uniform. And you will get this red pop error pop up um, if your area is not uniform. So we can go around and we can just try to select a large area that's kind of uniform, which it's not always possible, but when it's possible, that's what we have to search for. So I can even make this a little larger. And this is my um, manual selection. So let's see if I, how big I can make this box. So yeah, so I'll select that area and then I will go ahead and normally this apply would, so let's see, um, yeah, we hit auto profile, then we hit apply. And now let's take a look at the difference between both of these. The one where I did a manual selection. So this is the reduced noise selection and this is my selection. So we have a, a bit more grain removed than we did before. So there is another process where you can shift your color space using a color space node. So let me go ahead and we're going to need two. So we're going to need two color space nodes for this um, setup. And I'll explain to you what we're doing here in one second. So we can go ahead and do that. And then um, we'll take a look at what our footage came in is. So um, these are all MOV files, so they're most likely going to be um, Rec. 709. Um, if you're working with DPX and, you know, EXRs, you're going to find, um, you're going to find uh, like maybe Alexa, um, color space or you know you're gonna have some different color spaces when you're working with actual footage but for this example you know I, I only have MOVs so basically um, when you convert your color space so I'll convert my color space my in color space is linear and then I'll, I'll convert my color space to uh, rec 709 so when you convert your color space from linear to rec Rec 709 before denoising your footage in Nuke, the denoise algorithm will be applied to the image data in the Rec 709 color space. So let's take a look. 
Of course, when we're working in Nuke, Nuke works in the linear color space. Denoising algorithms work by analyzing the image data and removing the noise while pres preserving as much detail as possible. However, the way that that algorithm analyzes the image data can be affected by the color space of the image. In a linear color space, the values of the image data are proportionate to the amount of light captured by the camera. This means that the noise in the image is also proportionate to the amount of light and, de and the denoising algorithm will take, into, in, will take that information into account um, when removing the noise. Now, when you switch your um, color space to Rec. 709, the values in the image data are now not linear proportionate to the amount of light, and the noise in the image may not be proportionate to the amount of light either. So let's copy this. Um, We'll just copy this same reduced noise and we'll just put it in between these two color space nodes. Now in the first color space, we want to convert our image from linear to, to Rec. 709, which is the native um, color space of our footage. And then we will convert it back from Rec. 709 um, to back to linear because of course we wanna work in linear color space. And then we'll just compare these two inputs and we see that they're the same. So we know that our conversion is correct. And now let's look at the reduced noise by itself versus the reduced noise with our color space shift. So let's look in some areas. So it's a very minor, um, it's a very minor um, difference. So, um, I do want to explain why sometimes shifting out your color space and shifting it back will work better. Now, sometimes what happens is in your dark areas, when you're using the reduced noise, um, there will be some still some grain left in the dark areas and shifting out your color space will help um, the reduced noise to remove the grain in those areas so you're not having sort of this double grain effect when you reapply your grain using dots grain. Um, another thing that it's helpful with is when you find that when you reduce your noise, when you apply the reduced noise, you're losing a lot of detail. So there's all these details and then all of a sudden when you apply your reduced noise, those details are lost and it kind of seems like those details are in the grain. When you reapply your dots grain, well, when you reapply your grain using dust grain, dust grain isn't necessarily going to pick up on all those details that were lost in your reduced noise. So sometimes you do want to like have a reduced noise where it's, you're not taking away completely all of the noise. You want to still retain some of the noise in your, um, even after the reduced noise, because you want to make sure you're not removing too many details from the plate when you are denoising your plate. So um, this, this color space shift is helpful for that. Now, another thing that's also helpful, which is one thing that I like to do, uh, because when you have that grain, even a little, it could still mess up um, your tracking. When you're trying to track your image, um, your footage, you the track might still be affected by the little bit of grain that's left in there. So what I like to do is I like to um, I like to do a really uh, clean denoise where everything is gone, um, and then I will actually label this. I'll specifically label this. So maybe I'll put a backdrop, and I'll label this um, tracking denoise. So we'll call this one my tracking denoise. So I know that this one may be like an extreme denoise, but I that's fine for tracking because it's going to track um, the plate better. So for this one, I might even go into some of the other settings. Um, so let's just say, let's see, can I select a different area? Let's see if I select this area. So I'm getting the not uniform area error. Okay, so let's try that. Now, there are also some additional noise settings, which 
looks like I'm not able to, um, okay, once I clicked on auto profile, I get them up. So you can also start adjusting some of the noise filter settings, um, depending on which version of reduced noise you're using, you get some different settings. But if you play around with these, then you could even, um, actually, I'm not going to sharpen this. You could even, um, get a better idea of, um, how you, like if you want to get a really smooth um, degrain for for your tracking only, so you could just like bump around some of these settings to clear that up all the way and make it like extra smooth. And now I will render this out as a pre comp, and I'll call it tracking denoise, and then I'll probably take that into Mocha. So let's look at this one, and then we'll look at that one. So. So this one even has more of the grain um, removed from it. And that's like a more extreme denoise. So um, yeah, it's totally fine to have more than one denoise, especially if you find that you're, track, you're, you're still having problems with tracking, but you also still need the, detoy, the details that, are, um, that seem to be getting taken away from the reduced noise when you're degraining your plate. So keep in mind um, the size of the um, the size of the sample that the sample area that you're choosing it needs to be um, it, it needs to be large enough. Um, the brightness you don't want to pick any bright pixels you don't want to pick any pixels that are too dark. Which the dark areas of your plate are of course going to have more grain. So you might think oh that's a good area to sample, but realistically you want to stay somewhere in the mid tones range. And then you don't want to pick any area that's too saturated because you don't want your um, that's that heavy saturation to skew the results of the grain in those channels, like specifically, you know, with the red, I mean, with the blue and the green screens. And then um, it's also okay to shift out the color space when you need to pay attention to how the D grain is affecting um, the blacks and um, the mid tones, you want to like look through your results and make sure that it's working in the way that you need to. And if you realize that too much detail is being lost, you need to go ahead and dial back those settings on your um, reduced noise. And um, definitely don't don't um, don't hesitate to create a really extreme denoise for tracking purposes when you need to.